And I'll tell you what, we're going to talk about a lot of solo moments from this game today because there are some, there are some flags that could be flown for the worst performance I've ever seen from a Chelsea player at Stamford Bridge. And there are also moments where you're like, there are some of these players who are actually really bloody good. And I went into this game thinking, it's not going to be easy. This is Chelsea. We like to make things difficult, but we've been on a fantastic run at Stamford Bridge. We've been winning a lot of our home games. And it looked as though, when we're going through that first half, that we're going to absolutely cruise through this one again. We go 1-0 up with what I can only describe as a goal that you would expect against a lower league opposition in maybe like the FA Cup third round, where you see a golfing class between the attackers of the Premier League and defences of lower league clubs. Leicester are flying high in the Championship. They're having a great season. But it is so easy how Nicholas Jackson makes a phenomenal run down that right-hand side channel, who, by the way, Jackson... When it comes to running into those channels, right now, there are very few players in the Premier League playing as well as him in that moment, in that position in the pitch. He goes down and Mark Cucurella gets his first ever Chelsea goal and makes it 1-0. There is then an opportunity for us to make it 2. Raheem Sterling wins a penalty. Well, I mean, it's, it's probably one of the most obvious penalties you'll ever see. Sterling air shots it because he gets his leg taken away. And he decides he wants to take the penalty. Raheem Sterling, mate, you have missed more penalties, I believe, in your career than you've scored. Cole Palmer doesn't miss, and he's Chelsea's penalty taker. It is a moment of complete and utter madness that showcases the lack of leadership in this Chelsea team. And I don't know who's been allowing the players. Pochettino said earlier this season, it's up to the players on the field. There's a lot of them that can take them piss off. It's bollocks. Sterling should never have been near that ball. And he hits a penalty that... I think even the three-year-olds that sometimes go on the field at half-time and there's a big roar around Stamford Bridge when they score from one yard, I think they hit the ball with slightly more venom than what we saw there from Sterling. I'm starting to think maybe it's not his day, but it should still be Chelsea's because then Sterling rectifies it, puts the ball across to Cole Palmer. It's 2-0 to Chelsea and it looks as though it's game over. Two simple goals round the back of a Leicester defence that aren't really blessed with the most speed and pace in the world. Chelsea get it done. Call in Pochettino for that half-time team talk. I don't know what it is. I don't know if they're like sprinkling some like ketamine on the half-time Jaffa cakes, but we come out for the second half and it is as if we have been tranquilized like a horse that needs to have a flipping surgery. I don't know what is going on with Chelsea at the beginning of second halves, but it is seriously concerning. It's worrying. Axel de Sassi scores probably the best goal of his career so far. 35 yards out, but it's in your own net, mate, all right? He's gone to give it back to Sanchez, who's also had a shocking game, but then that's not really a surprise to me anymore because Petrovic is a better goalie. Sanchez, I don't think, is a very good keeper. It's 2-1 to Chelsea. It should be all right, shouldn't it? No, it's not all right. Mavidi, Mav Mavididi. I don't know if I said his name correctly there. I've not really seen much of Leicester this season. I don't really watch the championship. Not going to lie to you. But he buries one into the bottom corner of the net. It's a brilliant finish. But how have Chelsea gone from being 2-0, comfortable, to 2-2 at Stamford Bridge, throwing it away again? And then as the game is going on, you see substitutions. No, you don't. Pochettino leaves it late again. And Stamford Bridge starts to boo as Mudrik, who put in a really, really good professional performance. It's one of the best I've seen Mudrik play. Given a start, and he was useful. He was fighting. He was getting into good positions, playing a bit more centrally. And Mudrik was really good. Raheem Sterling isn't taken off. Mudrik is taken off. And the crowd starts to get absolutely angsty. And you can understand why. Because Sterling put in, in my opinion, the worst ever performance that I've seen from a Chelsea player at Stamford Bridge. And I don't want to just like, I know he's not in form. I know he's obviously down right now. And he doesn't, I don't believe he wants to be playing this bad game after game. But the way that he looks as though, when it comes to like the attitude of rectifying things, he gets the assist for Palmer. That was good. But it is so often from Sterling that it just doesn't look like a footballer at the level that you need to be if you want to be competing for trophies, which is mental when he has spent his whole career lifting trophies above his head. It's 2-2, and then obviously Leicester go down to 10. Nicholas Jackson 
deserves all of the credit for Chelsea winning this game. Because when Leicester go down to 10 men and it's a red card, it's not a penalty, it's a red. And then obviously from there on, Leicester playing with 10 men, Chelsea should go on and do it. Chukwemeka scores the third and Nonny scores a fantastic fourth. We've got to get into the boxes here in Six Things We Learned, but bloody hell did we make this bloody difficult for ourselves. Box number one is a red for Raheem Sterling. Like I said, I think it is one of the worst performances that I've ever seen from a Chelsea player. It really was poor. The fact that he has the audacity to take that penalty when Cole Palmer's been the penalty taker all season, burying every penalty that he takes for Chelsea, and the way that he's obviously been so out of form, sometimes you just you want to have that ball, you want to put it in the back of the net. But this is, a, this is part of the big issue that we have right now at Chelsea, where there isn't standards. There is no way on this earth that it should be allowed that Palmer does not take that penalty when you know just how brilliant he's been from set pieces all season long. Sterling takes it and he misses it. The free kick later on in the game as well. He somehow manages to put that almost out of Stamford Bridge. And it's not the smallest stadium in the world. Might not be the biggest in the Premier League, but bloody hell. You've got to do, you've got to play pretty poorly to have a third of Stamford Bridge booing you off the field when you're not losing a game of football. That is how poor Raheem Sterling was today. On the flip side, literally, the right-hand side of the field, Malo Gusto, this guy is absolutely magnificent. Maybe he gives a little bit too much space for the Leicester second goal. But the way that this guy fights for the Chelsea team, be it going forward, supporting Cole Palmer on that right-hand side, this is becoming a really profitable area of the pitch for Chelsea. Not just in terms of like the value of players that we've, that we've actually spent, but the returns that we're getting right now. Not just from Palmer, obviously, but Malo Gusto as well. I'm telling you now, when Reese James is fit, Pochettino, if he's still in a job, by the way, Pochettino is going to have a serious decision to make because you can't take Malo Gusto out of this team with the way that he's playing right now. He's a phenomenal footballer. Box number three is a red. This is weird. Chelsea are into the semi-final of an FA Cup, but I've got to talk when it comes to the boxes here about the individual players today. And Axel De Sassi is a red. I mean, like it's kind of funny now because we've actually gone on and won the game 4-2. But like, what is he thinking when it comes to that goal? I know it's one of those fluky ones where if he tried it 10,000 times, he probably wouldn't score it the way that he did again. But it's once more, since that Man City game, where he obviously came in for so, many, so much praise, and it was rightly so, since that City game, Mr. Error-prone, Axel de Sassi, that has been what he's been. Error-prone over and over again. And I think what Chelsea did was left so much space when Dewsbury Hall, or I can't remember the guy's name on the right-hand side for Leicester, really qu quick, tricky right winger. These guys were just getting the balls in behind. That is what they needed to do all day because between De Sassi and Trev, there was no control of that back line for us whatsoever. Box number four is a green for Mark Cucurella, who I thought actually... Mark the Leicester right winger out of the game for the majority of it. The brilliant defensive work. Got himself forward. Got the first Chelsea goal. And I feel as though Cucurella is one of those players who hasn't really done so much in a Chelsea shirt yet. So he's quite often void of praise because he's either injured or he's not played well. I thought today he did play very well. And instead of always repeating myself saying Cole Palmer's phenomenal, Cole Palmer's this, because he flipping is, we'll get to him in a moment. Cucurella deserves his praise today. Box number five is a red for Pochettino for making the worst substitutions once again. I know that ironically, Chukwemeka scores a Poch sub. Madweki scores a Poch sub. But the way that we made it so difficult, at the end of the day, you're playing against 10 men and a team in a lower division. So at Chelsea were bound to be peppering them by the end of this game. But to leave Sterling on the field for that long, look, Stop protecting bad players. I want to see my manager being brutal. The way that he's been brutal with Mudrick, it's double standards at this point. Mudrick clearly hasn't been doing all the things that Pochettino wants him to do tactically. So Mudrick gets dropped. The same has to happen now to Raheem Sterling. We cannot see him start Chelsea's next game after that performance. It was that bad. Poch, be bold, be brave, because we're starting to see 
Jackson coming to form, Mudrick, Palmer brilliant, Gusto. There are enough positives right now in this Chelsea team that we've actually got something to work with. We've actually got someone to build upon and beyond. So be bold. Stop leaving players in there for experience when they're actually the worst on the field right now. And it's ironic because I've been saying all year we need older players. We need more experience in this team. But come on, man. Get it right and don't keep playing the same old trash. We finish box number six. Here's a green for Cole Palmer. Gets himself a goal. It's an unbelievable piece of vision to get Carney Chukwemeka in right at the end of the game as well with that little death flick through the middle of that Leicester back line. That was what made it 3-2. And then it was Nonny's individual brilliance in that moment to make it 4 but Cole Palmer again. Look, this guy, it could have, if he had the penalty, he probably scores it. He buries every single one. So once again, we're talking about another double goal, assist game from Palmer. And he gets himself involved again multiple times today. The man is the best player right now at Chelsea Football Club. We're into the semi finals of the FA Cup. Look, you've got to look at the other sides Man City, Liverpool, or Man United, and this Coventry. You want Coventry at this point, then maybe we're in another final. That's what we're hoping for. Chelsea get it. I can't believe it. Like it's it's the weirdest four two FA Cup fi- quarter final win because that second half was just so poor, so so poor. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Subscribe if you're new. Come on, you Blues.